over, over 3,000 years ago, this is, this is from the Exodus, this is from when the Lord said, you shall keep this and you shall continually keep this. I mean, that's how it starts and it goes on and then Messiah says this and now he says, do this in remembrance of me. It says in Exodus 12, 26 and 27, when your children ask you, why are you doing these things? You will say, this is the Passover sacrifice to honor the Lord. When we were in Egypt, the Lord passed over the houses of Israel, and when he killed the Egyptians, he saved our homes. Then the people bowed down and worshiped the Lord. So this is something that we should all be doing all the way through history. Well, this is something that the first believers certainly did, and that's where where Paul says, Messiah, our Passover has been sacrificed, let us celebrate the feast with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So this was done clearly. In fact, I mean, originally what we call Easter was done on Passover. And then what happened is as the, as the church in Israel went their ways and church history and all that, they actually made laws saying you can't celebrate it on Passover. But this, but this is all Passover. I mean, clearly he came for that. So it's really not Easter. We'll talk about that. You know, Easter is a, I mean, what I mean is the word Easter is not the best word because it comes from some pagan roots, but it's, it's, Passover. That's the celebration of new life. That's what he chose to do. So in one form or another, believers are keeping it because if you keep communion, communion is a form clearly from Passover. So it's one way or the other. The thing, what we're going to do today and the next few days is to do this in its fullness, which, which is beautiful. I mean, it's for everyone. So the people at home, do they, what can they do to participate with it? They, they get matzah and they get grape juice, they'll be okay. I mean, they can do the whole thing, that, that's fine, you know, but if they get that, they'll be able to participate through it it's the, as the communion throughout, throughout the entire Passover. First of all, everybody, everybody out there, um, you should have a plate that has the Passover foods on it. Now, each one, now in each group, you, you're, say, if you, you have a plate for about 10 people, that's your group. That's your Passover within the Passover. So you can, each person, when we do, we do a certain thing we're going to do, uh, like we're going to dip into the salt water, one person can be in charge of that, and then we have the matzo, one person can be in charge of that, and you can all, so everybody takes part. You can also pass things around as you're led, but each one you have to kind of plan. So you should meet your people. You should at least know the people who are in your group because that's your, that's your last supper. Well, that's your Passover. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> your communion. <laughs> no, not your last oh, supper. <laughs> yeah. And this is it. So, so yeah, know your people and that'll be, and, and then and you each, each take part in it. And then we'll, and then we'll, and then we'll just, after this one, we'll get into, we'll, we'll come into the presence of the Lord in his Thank spirit you, and we'll begin. And right now, Rabbi, Thank you for oh, being here for this blessing. special, looking forward to special this. time. Really looking forward to this. You know, the Lord said, um, he said, uh, I really look forward to celebrating this Passover with you. And I really look forward to this from the day that Lori said, what about this? And then we said, yes. And here we are. The yeah. time's come. And we are going to celebrate something very special. I I've been watching the monitors as, uh, you know, with the worship, and it's been incredible. Um, I think I can safely say that you all love the Lord very much. Yes. And that's why we're here. Yes. That's why we're here. We love you, Lord. That's we what we're going to do. Now, I think we could begin by lighting the candles. There should be a lighter on every table. So why don't that, that will be the beginning that we're, as we enter God's presence together. You also have something there. And... We will also enter in prayer because we want to prepare our hearts. This is truly the Lord's Supper. This is the communion that he said, do this in remembrance of me. This is the Passover that God said, do continuously. So we've got several things coming in from the Lord saying, do this. There's going to be a blessing in doing this. And it's, so it's written in the, in the Hebrew Scriptures, this day will be a memorial to you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord throughout your generations. You're to celebrate it as a permanent ordinance. And then we mentioned in 1 Corinthians, the scripture is 1 Corinthians 5, verse 7 to 8, where Paul goes right out and says it, Messiah, or it says Christ, it is Messiah or Mashiach, our Passover or Passover lamb has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast with the unleavened bread or the matzah of sincerity and truth. 
And we've got all that here. Now, Christ means Messiah? Christ is Messiah, so yeah. So when we say Jesus Christ, we're saying Jesus the Messiah. Yes, exactly. For, see, growing up, most Jewish people, this is one of the things that stops them right, right at the gates. When they hear the word Christ, and that's fine, it's a fine translation, but it's very hard because they've been called Christ killers and all these things. So oh, they hear that. And people yes. think, it's, they think that it's Jesus Christ. It's like, you know, Mr. and Mr., Mrs. Christ have their son Jesus. It's not a last no, name. No. Christ is simply the way of, it's translating from the Hebrew Mashiach, which means the anointed one. Why don't we try that? Mashiach. Mashiach. And some of you got the ch, so that's that, you're in. You yeah. got the huh. Mashiach <laughs> means the anointed one, and it was translated into Greek. It became, it became Christos, or Christos, and that in Hebrew, I mean, in English became Christ. But it's really Jewish. So, I mean, if you say you're a, we're a Christian, we're a follower of the Christ, it means we are, also, we are followers of the Messiah. If Jewish people saw that, it would be harder for them to say, oh, that's not for me. Because this uh -huh. is the most Jewish thing in the world, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so when so when Paul says Christ, exactly, it means the Messiah who was awaited. Would it be for good centuries. for us at times just to write it and speak it and just say, Jesus, our Messiah? Yeah, sure, absolutely. I like that. I mean, I, He's the Messiah. And I think, that's what it means. You know, I, we we get a little, you know, sometimes we've gotten too friendly and uh, kind of careless with how we treat Jesus Christ. And he's a yeah. swear word in, in so, almost every movie that the world produces. Yeah. So we want to bring him to the Messiahship because he yeah. is the Messiah. He's yeah, already absolutely. come and he's coming back. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, and the point is, you know, people can use every, every word, whatever, whatever fits, but that sometimes people use words and they don't have the meaning of what, is it, what, are, what are you saying? When the angels first said it, when they said it to the shepherds and said, for in Bethlehem, you know, the Christ. They said, Mashiach, your Messiah, your awaited anointed one is born in the city of David, the one who's going to save Israel and save the world. That, it, it's powerful, mm -hmm. the anointed Mashiach, Messiah. So all those words are fun. That's why sometimes it's good to say Yeshua, because not that G the, the, the word Jesus is great, well, I'll be saying it, all, but, but it's a translation. It's fine, it's English, but when you say Yeshua, that's what he was called. You know, it's translated into Jesus. Mm -hmm. So Yeshua, and Yeshua has meaning because Yeshua, it says you will call him Yeshua because he will save his people from their sins. Mm -hmm. Because Yeshua means God, Jehovah, Adonai, is the salvation, is our salvation, yes. is yes. my salvation. Yes. That's yes. what Yeshua means. And he so, is. <laughs> so it's all, we use all of, we'll use all of it, <laughs> but it's good to do that. Yeah. So then, now Messiah says, this is, it says in the, in the Gospel of Luke, ver, chapter 22, then came the day of unleavened bread. And now here's another thing. If pe you know, people read unleavened bread, but they don't, but Jewish people read it, they say, okay, that's nothing to do with me. That's matzah. It's the day of matzah, unleavened bread, yeah. on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus, Yeshua, sent Simon Peter, or Shimon, and Yochanan, John, and said, go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Mm -hmm. Where do you want us to prepare it? They asked. He replied, as you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters and say to the owner of the house, the rabbi asks, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room, all furnished. Make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus, Yeshua, told them. So they prepared the Passover. And when the hour had come, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Mm -hmm. And so here it is. And it says they reclined because that was part of Passover about you're free now. You can relax. I might be standing a little bit, but I'm, we're all free here. So we get to Lord, lean back here. You can lean day. back. You wow. can relax if you can't, but you don't have to. It just, it's a sign that inside that we're free. Yes. Now, we want, let's open up with prayer. Let's come into the yes. Lord's presence. And you can do some gentle things there. Father, we just praise you, praise you this day in Morningside. And we thank you for what we are about to do. And Lord, we thank you for this moment that you are here. And we thank you, Lord, that what we're doing is, is, as far as we know, unprecedented, that this is going out to millions. And Father, we just ask that you lead, that you minister, that your presence be strong and you touch each person here and each person who will turn on the television on purpose or by accident or, or on the web. We just ask, anoint what we're doing here from Morningside, just as you anointed it 2,000 years ago from Jerusalem, and it went forth to the world. We praise you and thank you for our Redeemer, Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua, our Passover Lamb. Amen. Amen. Amen.
the Passover is one of the most unique things ever put on earth. It's ancient. It is celebrated by the children of Israel. It is celebrated also by the children of Israel in spirit. If you are born again, you've already been doing a form of it. And we're going to celebrate this day what God did when he brought his people out of bondage and slavery. But we're also going to celebrate what he did when he fulfilled this 2,000 years ago when Messiah brought us out of bondage and slavery. And so every born-again believer has a link to Passover. We're going to, you're, we're going to celebrate our own salvation in this because God put this together to speak to us and to remind us. He told the, the Israelites, never forget what I took you out. Yeah. Never forget you know, the Egypt I saved you from. And he tells us who are born again, never forget what I brought you out of. Oh. Never forget all the blessings I've, yes. I've given you. Yeah. Never forget so you'll never even look no. back. Right. You'll give thanks to me forever <laughs> and you yes. will prosper in the promised land. Oh, so you. Passover exists in two realms. You've got the physical realm mm -hmm. with, the, with the Jewish people and we're going to celebrate that and every Christian has to love and bless the Jewish people because we're one together. Yes. And there's the spiritual realm in which we are also children of this commonwealth. Mm -hmm. And in this, this is ours. And in Messiah, it all comes comes together, we are celebrating also our own Passover. And so here, for those of you who are watching or listening and you are born again, this is your, your in a sense, it's your birthday. It's what we are coming back to. And for those who are not, we encourage you to, to listen because this is the call to salvation as we were saved on Passover. So how it began, and I also want, I also want you to experience it because we're going to, when we say the blessings, we'll say it as Jesus said it in the exact words. We know the words he said. We'll, we'll do it as best we can as, as they did it, uh, with the exception that we're not on the floor or we're not, we're not in the Middle Eastern thing. But this is, this is the same thing that has gone from 2,000 years that he did. And so the way it would happen, you, I've got to imagine we, we go back to Jerusalem and it's 2,000 years ago. The sun is setting in the spring. And the oil lights are being lit as you've lit the lamps. Imagine you're in the upper room. And a sound goes forth from the temple of Jerusalem to signal that the Passover is begun. So when Messiah was there in the upper room, they all could hear the sound from the temple as the, as the priest on the trumpet on the, on the corner of the temple would sound, this is the time now, everything we do is sacred in the presence of God. And the Passover begins. We come into his presence, and I want you just to really, more than anything that happens today, I want you to be in his presence and just let him speak to you. And he said, I've desired this Passover with you. And this is the exact, these are the exact words that he said when he picked up the cup. This is the first cup. There will be four cups. This is what the, the fullness of the communion. And he said these words. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, shehachianu v'kimanu v'higianu lazman hazeh. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, who has preserved us alive, who has, has sustained us, and who has brought us to this day. We thank the Lord. This is the cup of, called the cup of sanctification. And we all may lift up this cup. This is the first cup, and we're only, when, we, when we drink, only, we only drink when we do this all together. We'll only take some sips, we'll do it four times. So this is the, fir the first one. It says in Luke 22, when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he said, take this and share it among yourselves. This is the opening of the Passover, the first cup called the cup of, of, setting, of sanctification. And he said, these are his exact words. He said this, Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, bore peri hagafen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine and we partake the first cup. Passover is about life, death, redemption, resurrection. You see the symbols on here. This is called the karpas. This is the symbol of spring. 
that it, in God there's a new beginning, and that's what this is all about. Mm. God always gives new beginnings. Thank God. And here is spring, but it's also a symbol of the hyssop where they dipped the blood of the lamb on the doorposts in Egypt. This is this called the heroset, which is the bitter herbs. The Lord said, you will eat this with bitter herbs. And the point is, the Lord wants us to remember what we never have to live in again. And this is what, what he has saved us from. So this remembers for the Egyptians, the, the, this was the pain of Egypt, the sorrow of the Israelites, but, and in the Lord spiritually, this is the sorrow of sin that God has removed from our life. This is called, I'm sorry, this was the Maror, bitter herbs. This is called the Haroset, and that is a mixture that's to look like the mortar that was done in Egypt that they put on the bricks. And this actually tastes sweet, even though it's representing the bondage of Egypt or, and the bondage of sin. It represents all the works that we have done that are now removed from our lives. And then we have this is the salt water, which represents the tears of Egypt and the tears of sin that the Lord turns into joy in the end. And this is called the Beitza, which is the egg, and it represents again birth, new birth. Israel is, in a sense, born again, and all God's Israel who are born again are born again when you come to Messiah. And it's also roasted. That's why it's, it's not an Easter egg. It's roasted because it also represents the sacrifice of the lamb, which has been gone for 2,000 years. There's no temple. There's been no lamb sacrifice because a lamb has come. And then this is kind of a mystery. This is called the Zoroah. We were going to talk about it last time, but we didn't have time, so we're going to talk about it now. But yes. this is a mystery here we will get to. And then we have the matzah, and that is the symbol of, that is the unleavened bread, symbol of the bread that was taken when the Hebrews came out of Egypt, and this is the bread of redemption. It's also the bread that has no yeast in it, so it is a symbol that there is no sin in this bread. This is pure bread, the bread of redemption from this bread will come communion. It was, it always is matzah. And then you have the fruit of the vine. And this represents the blood of the lamb. It represents also the new wine of God's joy, the life and the blessings. It all comes together and the blood of Messiah as the fulfillment, the cup of the new covenant. This is Elijah's cup. And that is because yeah, if you want to lift that. That's Elijah's cup, and that's symbolic. We'll get to it as we get to the second part, that the Passover speaks also of the future and what is yet to come. And the Bible says that Messiah is not coming until Elijah prepares the way. This is saying that Passover is ultimately also about the coming of Messiah, which we'll get to as we get to the second part. So Passover is here, a, a, a festival by God of life, of death, of, of sorrow, of joy and redemption, and the power of God, because every one of us who is born again has that story yes. written in our lives. Yes. We have Passover in our lives. We were saved on Passover. We'll get, and we, every day of our life, is in the Passover lamb. Yes. So, in Exodus 12, God says, obey these instructions as a lasting ordinance for you and your children. When you enter the land the Lord gives you, as he promised, observe this ceremony. And when your children ask you, what does this ceremony mean to you? Tell them, it is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord who passed over our houses of the Israelites in Egypt and spared our homes. So God said, do this so you never forget. And when your children watch this every generation, they'll say, what is this about? And so to make sure that the children ask the right questions in the Passover, they always have the questions for the children to ask just to make sure. And so it's done in Hebrew, and it's done according to an ancient melody that sounds like the shofar blasting in, in Israel. And I'll just try my best. I'm coming, my voice is going to be a little bit shot today, but I'll do my best. But it's like, it's this. Matzah. <laughs> 
שבכל הלילות אנו אוכלים שער ירקות, הלילה הזה מרור. שבכל הלילות אין אנו מטבילים אפילו פעם אחת, הלילה הזה שתה פעמים. שבכל הלילות אנו אוכלים בין יושבין ובין מסובין, הלילה הזה כולנו מסובים. And what it says in effect, the, the child asks, why is this night different from all of the nights? On all the nights we eat leavened or unleavened, but this night only leavened. On all the nights we don't dip, but now we dip today. On all the nights we sit up, but now we recline. So they're asking, and the answer is, the leader says, Avadim hayinu b'mitzrayim, because we were slaves in Egypt under Pharaoh, but God, by his mighty hand, redeemed us. If he had not saved us, we'd still be in Egypt, we'd still be in bondage, but God reached down into our lives and saved us. That is the beginning. And so what has to be done in the, this, what always has to be done on Passover is to tell the story of Passover. And so, and I know we, most of us have seen the movie, but the, the thing is that this is the story that God gave that means something to everyone. And feel free to, as you're led, um, you, you can speak in a Passover as, as you're led, but I want to just share a little bit. And that is that the story of Passover begins with God giving a people a promise, and he calls them into the world through Abraham. He says, you're going to be like the stars of heaven. But then they are taken all into bondage in a foreign land, the land called in, in Hebrew Mitzrayim, Egypt. And in this land, they're separated from God, and they're darkened from God, and it's a land of idols. It's a land of bondage. It's a land of false gods. It's a land of emptiness and, and, and straining and laboring and and not being the people they were meant to be. They're a fallen version of the people. The, the people of God are come as slaves. And then they cry out to God, and God has a plan. And he sends, he sends a child into that world. The child, a little baby, is taken by his mother and put into a basket and put into the river to save his life as they are killing Hebrew children. And the little child is going to be the Redeemer. He's a shadow of a greater yes. Redeemer. And he goes, and even at the beginning of his life, they try to kill him. And they put him in the water. And then he is found by the Pharaoh's daughter. And she looks at him and she says, He'll, his name shall be Moshe. Moshe, because I have drawn him out of the water, means to draw out. And God will use Moshe or Moses to draw out his people from Egypt. So Moses <laughs> rises as the, a prince of Egypt. And one day... He joins his people. He strikes down an Egyptian, flees into the wilderness. And there, at, there he spends 40 years of his life in the wilderness with a little flock, sh keeping his flock, until one day he sees this burning bush. And the thing about the burning bush is not that it was burning, it's that it would not burn up. Kind of a symbol in some ways of the power of God. I am. He, he, he's the blaze, that, that he's the self-existent one. He's there. And he says, Moshe, Moses, take off your shoes. You're standing on holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I have heard this, the oppression of my people. I've heard their cries, and I will come down, and I will save them. This is the God who comes down and saves us. And so he commissions Moses. And Moses is fascinating because his ministry begins at 80 years old. <laughs> he, he, has, he, has three, he has three periods of his life. The first, year, the first 40 years, he's a prince. The second, he's a shepherd. And the third, he's the redeemer. And so the first part of his life, he learned how to be somebody. The second part, he learned how to be nobody. And the third part, he learned to be a redeemer that anybody in God's hands will do great and mighty things. So he's sent down to Egypt. He goes to the Pharaoh and he says, let my people go. Pharaoh says, I will not. I am my own God. I do not, do not recognize this God. And so the Lord says, okay, we are going to judge the gods of Egypt. And so from one judgment after the other, ten come upon Egypt, and each one judges a god of Egypt, the Nile god, the health god, the, the cow god, all these things, until the last one comes. And he says this time, he says in Exodus 12, tell each of you, stay in your house Stay in your house, for I will go through the land of Egypt, and I will strike down the firstborn of each house. But if I see the blood of the lamb, I will pass over that house. So take that lamb. Take a lamb to your house. Sacrifice the lamb. Take the lamb's blood. 
put it on the doorpost of your house and then get in that house and stay in there until I'm called. And so the, the judgment com- comes over Egypt in the middle of the night, comes over Egypt, and all the firstborn of Egypt are struck down in every house except wherever the blood of the lamb was, that house was saved. And so Pharaoh calls Moses and says, get up, get out, leave this land. And so it says the children of Israel got up, they took the riches of Egypt with them and rose up and went forth out of Egypt, out of bondage, out of their old life to become the children of God, to become the royal children, the priests of God, and to enter the promised land. Mm. Now, before we even go further, that was just the story of the Exodus. Mm. But it's already hitting by the Spirit. Yeah. This is God's message to all of us. Yes. But before we g- get to that, it's something that's done on Passover. And in Hebrew, there's a word called dayenu. Dayenu. Dayenu means it would have been enough. Dayenu. Would have been enough. And so what's said is that, God, if you had only done this, it would have been enough. If you only didn't judge us, that would have been enough. But if you only took us out of Egypt, that would have been enough. And if you didn't t- but if you took us to the promise, that would, everything would have been enough. You didn't have to do anything. It's all grace. And so what is customary on Passover is to say, Dianu. So let's try. It's an easy one. Let's try that one. All right. Dianu. Well, you can do it stronger than that. Dianu. And so what is said on this, it's a... If he had only brought us out of Egypt and had not judged Egypt. Diane. Oh, you can do better than that, Morningside. Okay, here we go. Say it again. Dianu. 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 If he had only judged the Egyptians but not their gods. Dianu. If he had divided the sea but didn't make us pass through. Dianu. If he made us pass through but didn't bring us into the promised land. Dianu. If he had ha- he brought us to the promised land, it would have been enough. But he gave us Jesus. He gave us Messiah. And that would have been enough. He didn't have to do anything. And we have to remember this in our hearts. If we had nothing, we deserve nothing. It would have been enough, God, whatever you did. But we thank you. You have given us salvation. Thank you. And so now, what is the meaning of the story? The meaning to, of God, what he has spoken to our lives. It is very clearly this. Each one of us were created in the promise of God to be a child of God, in the purposes of God. God has a purpose and a plan. But we've all fallen. We've all grown up in some way, or most of us, separated from God in our own Egypt, in our own land of bondage, in our own sins, separated and calling out, and we knew something wasn't right. There's a bondage there. We weren't who we were supposed to be. And then God heard our cry, and God sent to this world a redeemer into the world born as a child the, the hope of this world and this this redeemer is also the lamb of god the lamb of passover and all he says come to me all you who are burdened down yes. and weary and you are slaves and i will give you rest and i will set you free if the son has set you free you are free indeed follow me and we're going to leave this place for something better and so now what we do we all take the carpas. We take everybody. You're gonna have, have to each one lead or pass this around, and you'll dip it in the salt water and then hold it, and we will partake it together. I guess we will pass this, yes. or I can, can do that here. And remember, right, the parsley is a symbol of spring, of new life, and the new birth, and yet the. And yet the salt water is a symbol of tears. And so it's, as in a moment, we're going to partake together. And there's nothing quite like this taste because it's the taste of tears, but it's also the taste of hope and life, and the, the green is new life. And in a moment, it's going to be that even we remember that even through our tears, God brings life through our tears. Yes. God has promised He will chain, turn our tears, He will turn our sorrows into joy. He will wipe our tears away. And we want to think, first of the the tears of Egypt, but also we want to remember today also the tears that we had cried out to God with and that God has saved us from. And And that every, in God, every sorrow 
is going to be redeemed for joy. Oh. It says he saves all your tears in the bottle. Oh, that's true. And so here, even often as this is symbol of life in springtime, the new birth often comes from tears. And even in our life, new life and blessings even come through tears in God. So we want to lift this up as we hold this in our hands and remember the sorrows and the tears that the Lord has wiped away uh, and that he used to actually bring us to, to birth, to new birth, and to blessings that we would never have known otherwise. And even in this, there is a blessing. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam borei peri ha'adama. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the earth, and now remembering all this in our life, we partake. Mm. Mm. This is the fullness mm. and the communion of all that this is about. Mm. Now we take the matzah. Rabbi, we yeah. are, this, this is really amazing. Yeah. Every, every word, you, yeah. you know, when you're talking about the blood on the post, when I was a little boy, I don't hear it sung anymore. Do you all remember, when I see the blood, I will pass I will pass over you. Did anybody ever sing that in your church? Oh, almost everybody. See, those old hymns, they weren't just written by some guy on a high somewhere getting excited. They're, they were written from the Word. Yes. When I see the blood. Yeah. And it's, well, well, you're going to yeah, do with no, this. But no. I don't want to please interrupt this. But no, it's not. so meaningful that those who have walked with God, like most of you here in this room, every part of it, you see our redemption in it. Yeah, yeah. From the beginning of the Bible to the end. The end, we'll get there. You have the lamb at the end. And then comes now, and that's just the first thing we've done here. And now we have the matzah, the feast of unleavened bread, matzah. And this is a plate here that has three matzahs, or a, each one here is in a, a, its own container, three as in a trinity of matzahs. And then you have the second of the trinity in this, the middle matzah becomes the center of the Passover, the second of the trinity. And here you have matzah, which here is a symbol of no sin, the bread of life, life-giving. Even this is striped. If you look closely, you could see through it. It's been pierced. It's been, in a sense, wounded. It's been, it's been through the fire. Oh. Here, and this is the matzah, the middle of the Trinity, that is always broken. The body is broken. And then, then one part of this is taken after this is broken, and the body is wrapped in a cloth and hidden away. And this is called the afikomen. Which is the one which there are several interpretations, but this is a mystery here that com that the Passover it gets revealed at the end. It's hidden away. Now each one there, whoever's going to be the leader of the matzah, take the there's a plate of matzah, three of them. Take the middle one, and then break it in half. And then if you have an extra napkin, wrap it up, hide it away. It says in the Bible, this I mean you're the bread of life. Here he is the one who was born in Bethlehem. And in Hebrew, we said, what is Bethlehem? It means the house of bread. Here the bread of life comes down in the house of bread. And here the one who was wrapped 2,000 years ago, and, this, and it's put away, and then it, it comes again. It's yeah. like it has a second coming at the end of the Seder. Yeah. And so here for, for the Jewish people, for 2,000 years, he's been hidden away. He, was, he came, the second of the Trinity, he was bruised, he was broken without sin, his body was broken, he was put away, wrapped in a shroud, hidden away, and even hidden from his people for 2,000 years. And then at the end, it, the, the Seder can't conclude until they have him back. So then he comes, then it comes back, and then comes, and that's when he says, you will see me again. And this is also here, so it's a symbol of our Redeemer. And in the story of Passover, the symbol is Moses, and Moses is a shadow of our Redeemer. 
He's born among us. He shares in our sufferings. He's a shepherd. He, he, is, he comes into our Egypt. He comes in yes. to take us out. And the shepherd, the Messiah, the Redeemer, Moses shows the Messiah or the Redeemer is a shepherd. He says, my sheep hear my voice. I call you by name. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. And so he, we celebrate today the one who came into our lives. Yes. Forget everything else. Forget all the things that surround religion, culture, what's happening in the church. The only thing that matters in the end is you and him. Yes. And that's the only thing that happened. That, that's what happened that makes us who we are, that he came into our lives. One day he saw us in our Egypt, and he didn't say you have to make it to heaven. He came down, says, I'm right here. I'm the God, the only God. I'm the God who comes to you wherever you are. Remember the mystery of the, the Hebrew marriage that yes. we'll do is that the, the bridegroom always has to make a journey to the bride. The bride never has to come to the bridegroom. Always the bridegroom reaches out to the bride. No matter where she is, no matter what she's in, what she's into, he comes. And so we want to remember that. And so we're going to take this bread, what you have, the bread that, that remains, and also one of the other pieces, and pass it around, and you can take a piece, and we're going to hold it in our hands, and this is going to be the first bread that we will partake of together. As we hold it in our hand, we want to remember the Redeemer who came to us. It is written, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him wouldn't perish but would have everlasting life. And so we want to never take for granted the one who came into our lives. And that's what makes all the difference when everything else is gone and all the voices are quiet and the opinions of man are gone. The only thing that's going to matter is that Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua, in the love of God, came to your life and loved you. So we want to remember right now and give thanks for him. And it says in the book of Corinthians, let us therefore celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven, or the leaven of malice and wickedness, but the unleavened bread, matzah, of sincerity and truth, we eat the redemption of, of the bread of purity and the blessing that he said. This is the exact blessing that he said 2,000 years ago. He said, Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, hamotzi lechem min ha'aretz. Blessed are you, Lord God, the eternal of the universe, who brings forth the bread from the earth, and we remember our precious Redeemer who will never leave us, the bread of life we partake. Thank you, Jesus. And now we move to what is called the Maror. Maror is the bitter herbs. Now this is going to be the, one of the dramatic points here now. <laughs> Maror means bitterness. And what is it about? In Egypt, they were, they, they, their, lives, their lives were made bitter by the Pharaoh. The Bible says that before we knew the Lord, our lives were bitter, were in darkness. Once you were not saved. And so we are going to right now partake of the bitter herbs. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the matzah. The bitter herbs are this, the, the, lighter, the lighter thing, not the haroset. And, and we're going to take, you want to leave some left so because we, we need to put them into one last thing after we do this. And as we do that, remember the, the, the bitter herbs. This is what actually God commanded in Exodus. You will eat it with bitter herbs. Bitter herbs, again, remind, remind us of the bitterness of Egypt for, the, for Israel, but it's also spiritually, we remember the bitterness before, being outside of God, the bitterness of sin. It's bitter, and we want to remember that, and that what God saved us from and removed from our lives, yes. the bitterness that's not there. You know, some of you, were, some of you here were into alcohol. Some of you were into drugs. Some of you were into sexual promiscuity. Some into simply anger, bitterness, selfishness, selfish ambition, greed, all sorts of things in your life. But God saw that and he said, I want you out of that and I will remove that by my hand. And so the blessing is even over bitterness is a blessing. We must bless God in all things. And when we give thanks, the bitterness becomes even a blessing because God promises to use all things in our life for good. 
And he said, this is the blessing in the language of Jesus. Baruch atav Adonai, Reheinu melech haolam, asher kadishonu b'mitzvotav, v'tzivanu al achilat maror. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, who commands us to partake of the bitter herbs. Okay, you may partake. We want to remember now that we did this, we take the other, we keep the, remember to keep the other, the first matzah hidden. We're not going to touch that for a little time. But then we go and we reach for the, the other matzah because now we're going to have the, we're going to have the haroset. Now the haroset, also though it represents the mortar of Egypt, it doesn't taste bad. It actually tastes sweet. And so it actually, even in, this is representative of the bondage of Egypt and also the bond, the works of the old life. And we're going to partake of it, but the traditional is that you still have to put a little bit of herbs on it. <laughs> so, but that's up to you. I'll leave this together. But we're going to partake this together. And there's something very, very, um, a real revelation about this haroset, which I'll tell you as we get it ready. So why don't we do that? And you can pass it around however you do this and do that. If you want to add the bitter herbs, you can. And here's the thing now. Now, we said what this represents, the mortar of Egypt, but also the works of our old life, the things we did and all our slaveries. And our, think about all the bondage in our life and all the things we've been, we've been in bondage to. And there may be some things that you're still in bondage to, but the, the point is of Passover, every year the power of God is just as real and new, and he will set you free if you give it to him truly and believe him. But here is something. It's not only the bondage, but there's something else. You remember in the Last Supper, there was one part in the Last Supper... When Messiah said, they said, who is going to betray you? And he said, the one who dips with me. Well, that is this. They would dip all this together. But he said, the one who dips with me. Now, interesting. Because here, what was dipped in here, you had the haroset, the symbol of the bondage. You had, you had a little bit of the bitter herbs, symbol of the bitterness of sin. And then you had the matzah kind of scooping it out. The matzah represents Messiah. But here you have the, what represents the bondage and the sins, and he's carrying it. He carries it upon himself. He who takes away the sin of the world. He comes in, he submerges himself into our sins and our bondage, takes it away. So what a perfect sign of his crucifixion. So Judas does it, he dips, and he, in a sense he's going to hand over Messiah to all this judgment. Yes. But Messiah dips, saying, really, nobody hands me over. I do it. I give up my own life. What a perfect signal or sign of Messiah giving his life and taking away our bondage. So here now, we partake of the Herosa. We want to take a moment to remember the bondages. Whatever it was, give thanks to God. Whatever he has taken out of your life, what, when you were not knowing God, or even when you knew him but still dwelt in darkness, whatever bondage that was, give thanks to God in your heart or with your lips. Give thanks to your God. Lord, we praise you this day, and we thank you for taking us out of the judgment, the prison, the bondage of that past life and of all things of darkness. You have set us free, and in you we are free indeed. And we thank you. And anything that needs to still go, we give it to you and we declare you who make us free, we are free indeed. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you for taking it all away and still. In the name of Yeshua, Jesus. And now, there's no Hebrew blessing for this. We just partake and remember. And that's where he said, come to me, all you who are weary mm -hmm. and burdened down, and I will give you rest. Mm -hmm. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. And it is even sweet that everything God touches in our life, he turns it around for redemption and sweetness. Mm -hmm. And now we move to the second cup, which is called the cup. Now this becomes the cup of judgment. And this stands for the price of Passover. And what we are going to do is we are going to 
take the cup first before we drink of it. You all have a plate. And we are going to dip. This is, this is traditional on Passover. That we're going to, for every plague or judgment, we're going to take our pinky, dip it, and dip it onto your plate for each of the judgments of Egypt. And we do this together. I'll say it in Hebrew and English. As we get ready, we're going to do nine, and then we'll stop. First judgment, we dip. Dam, blood. The second judgment, Sephardia, frogs. The third judgment, Kenim, vermin. The fourth judgment, Arov, flies. The fifth judgment, Dever, plague. The sixth judgment, Shechin, boils. (laughs) The seventh judgment, Barad, hail. The eighth judgment, Arbe, locusts, as they have in Egypt right now. And the ninth judgment, Hoshech, darkness. And the last judgment is the one that brings it all about. The final judgment is Maha, Machat Biharot, the death of the firstborn son. We dip the firstborn son. And what does the cup of judgment mean? For Egypt, it means that the old never gives way to the new without a fight. It means all evil must be judged for us to be set free. Passover is how to get to the promised land of God from Egypt. And the message is very clear and very simple of Passover. I mean, you take the message of Passover and and just say it, and what happens? You get the gospel. Passover says we were slaves, we were in bondage, but God saved us. We were saved by the blood of the Lamb. That's Passover. That's the gospel. And this world has only known one who is called the Lamb of God, only one, Messiah, Jesus. And so Passover is saying, come take refuge in the Lamb. In Passover, we declare we are saved by the blood of the Lamb. We are healed by the blood of the Lamb. We are whole by the blood of the Lamb. We are become new by the blood of the Lamb. We are blessed by the blood of the Lamb. We are the most blessed people on earth because of the blood of the Lamb. And so we lift up the cup, the second cup. This is the cup of judgment from which we dipped. And this is where, remember what he said? Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not your will be done, but mine. Meaning, Lord, I don't want to do this in this body, but greater than that, I want to do your will. And I would do this to save these ones who you have given me. And what does this represent? The death of the firstborn son and the death of the lamb. Messiah is the firstborn of God, and he's the lamb of God. And so we remember this price. Well, this is the covenant of Messiah who says, I will pay the price for you. I will go through, through the judgment of hell for you because of my love for you. There's no end to it. And therefore, we are in covenant together. As, I say, as, as he said, will you be mine is what he says in effect as the bridegroom says to the bride. And the bride says, yes, I will. And I will go where you go and I will be yours forever. And so on Passover, we remember this and we partake. And with this, Baruch Atah Adonai, these are his words. Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Peri Hagafen. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, who created the fruit of the vine. And just take a moment to remember and ponder the price that was paid because God so loved you, because Messiah so loved you, that he gave everything up, that somebody died for your judgment so you never would. Somebody died for your hell, so you never would, because his love is greater than death. And so with that, as Paul said, Messiah, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast with sincerity and truth. Let us partake of the cup of Messiah. Now, at this point, in the Passover, we would have a meal. Now, we don't have a full meal, but we do have something. We do have matzo ball soup. 
Mm. And I think that's something to have here. Yes. And so while we do this, they're going to serve you. And that is a very traditional Jewish meal and it from, made from matzah as of Passover. And while we do that, I'm going to share with you a message and maybe, maybe risk everything and try to do a song. We're, the word in Hebrew for Passover is Pesach. Try it. Pesach. Pesach. Pesach it, you got the chuh. You got it. You, you're there, Lori. You're there. When you get that, you've gotten Hebrew. Pesach. Remember, Messiah t- spoke with that as well. Pesach is the word of Passover. Now, in, in Hebrew, the word Passover doesn't just mean the Passover celebration. It also means the Passover lamb. It's the same thing. The lamb is the celebration. The celebration is the lamb. So that's why Paul could say Messiah, our Passover, or our Passover lamb. The Passover is the lamb. He's the center. It's all about him. Mm. And now for 2,000 years, the Jewish people have had the Passover with everything except the lamb. I mean, that's symbolic. There's no lamb at a Passover table. Because for 2,000 years, there's been, no, there's been no temple. There's been no sacrificed lamb. So they can't go up to the temple and get a sacrificed lamb. So how do you have Passover without the Passover? I mean, the Passover lamb. He's the center. He's the, he's the missing thing. It's all about the lamb. And this, this thing is not just for the Jewish people. This is for the church too, because the church also tends to have to become in many ways a Passoverless Passover, that we can do everything about the Lord, about the lamb, without being in the lamb. We can, it, see, our faith is not about the lamb. Our faith is the lamb. Yeah. Our faith is not about Jesus. It is Jesus. Yeah. I mean, that's it. It's life. It's not about it. And it's so easy to start doing things around him, even in ministry, and not him. Right. And so Passover is saying, come back to the lamb. Come back to the lamb. We can't just be about him. We have to be, it has to be him. Paul didn't say, my life is about him. It is, but that's not what it is. He said, my, to live is Messiah. Mm-hmm. He is life. Mm-hmm. He's the center of yeah. everything. And so the lamb is the center of the Bible. The mystery of the lamb comes from the beginning to the end. As a father <laughs> takes his son up a mountain, and his son asks the father, Father, I see the fire and I see the, I see the knife, but where is the lamb? And then the father answers, God will provide himself the lamb, my son, for the burnt offering. And then Moses writes, Moses writes, the name of that mountain is God will provide. So Moses, by the Holy Spirit, is saying the lamb of God will be provided on that mountain. Where is that mountain? In Jerusalem. That is where the lamb will be provided, on the very spot. And then comes Passover, and the Israelites are under judgment in danger, but then comes the lamb again, salvation comes in, the blood on the doorpost, every house puts the blood on the top, on the side, on the side, and then goes in. The entire nation is saved only by the blood of the lamb. Is God making this obvious or not? And then God commands them, build a temple, a tabernacle, a temple, and every day lift up a lamb. Every morning, the morning sacrifice, the lamb is lifted up. Every night, Every evening, the lamb is lifted up. The mystery of the lamb keeps going and going until finally he comes. Born in Bethlehem with the lambs. That's where all the temple lambs were. Born, greeted by the shepherds as they greeted the lambs. Spotless, pure lamb of God. And then Yochanan, John the Baptist, as we said last time, he looks at him who's a priest and says, Behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And he comes up to Jerusalem, and he comes up to the same place, the same mountain as Abraham is lifting up Isaac and says the lamb will be there. He comes up on the day of Passover, the day of the lamb, the, the place of the lamb, and there he is slain on the beams of wood. It's the mystery of the Passover lamb, that the center of our faith is this lamb of God. And there's a mystery in the Bible that goes by the name of Zeroah. Zeroah, in Hebrew, you can only see this in Hebrew, it says this in the Bible. It says, God created the world, created the universe by what is called the Zeroah. He created the planets, the stars, the galaxies, us, by the Zeroah. Then it's written in the Bible that he saved his people out of Egypt by the same thing, the Zeroah, by which he created the world. And then it says, one day he's going to show his salvation to all the earth 
through the Zoroah. So what is this Zoroah through which the universe was created, through which Passover happens, through which God says, I'm going to do it for the whole world, through that same thing, the Zoroah? The mystery is here because this is called the Zoroah. Every year, the Zoroah. What is the Zoroah? This is a bone of a lamb. And it's called the Zoroah by all the Jewish people every Passover, the Zoroah and the lamb. What is this? The answer comes in 700 years before Messiah walked the earth, the prophet Isaiah wrote of Messiah, and it says something, it's the, it's the Isaiah 53 describes Messiah. And it reads one way in English, but in Hebrew it reads differently. Let me tell you how it reads. When you open up Isaiah 53, it says this, Who has believed our report, and to whom has been revealed the Zoroah? What is it saying? Isaiah 53 is the revealing of the Zoroah. Messiah is the Zoroah who was wounded for our transgressions, bruised, he is the one through whom God created the universe. And now he's wounded, a man of sorrows. He's the Zoroah. He's the one by whom the Jewish people were taken out of, out of Egypt. Even then, he is the Zoroah. The punishment that fell upon him by his wounds, we are healed. He is Yeshua, the Zoroah. And that's what this is. This is saying that the lamb, the death of the lamb, this is the power by but the God created the universe, and by the power of God is seen, it's him, the Zoroah, dying on the cross. There is no power stronger on earth or in this universe than the love of God, the Zoroah. This also is translated sometimes as the arm of God. It means the power of God. What's the power of God? Yeshua, Jesus, is the power of God. What is the power of God? Messiah in weakness, dying on the cross with no power at all. That is the power of God, the Almighty, that is more powerful than all the armies of the world. The Zoroah, that is more powerful than all evil, than all darkness. The most powerful thing in this universe Praise is the love of God, yes. the Zoroah. Oh, Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. No. Thank you, God. I'm going to share one other thing before we move on and feel free. <laughs> what happened on that first Passover? They had to slay the lamb, take the blood of the lamb. They had to eat the lamb, partake of it. And then as judgment came, they had to get into the house that had the blood of the lamb. What, that, what was happening? When they went into that house with the lamb on it, they were saying, God is saying you have to get into the lamb. And, you, and then they ate the lamb, you have to have the lamb in you. Salvation is getting, is, what it's talking about, it's about totally identifying yourself with the Lamb. Whoever went into that house was saved. Whoever stayed out was not. They went, once you went into that house in Egypt, the old life was finished. Whatever you did was gone. You're never going to be a slave again. When you come out, you're coming out new. And so it's as if you died with the Lamb and you come out again. So the first thing that God is saying, it's not just saying, I believe in Jesus, that's great, but becoming completely one with him and letting him become completely one with you. It's totally one to take the lamb to every part of your life, especially the, the ungodly parts, and let the lamb touch it. Become one in all things. It's written in the Bible, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it. What's the name of the Lord in Hebrew? Yeshua. That is the salvation of the lamb. Once you go in him, you know, you know, Jesus would never have been called Jesus or Yeshua unless he had to die for us. He was never called that from eternity. He was the Son of God. But when he came down, he became Yeshua or Jesus. Why? Because of us. We, we are in his name already. He had to save us and die for us. We're in his name forever. We're joined together. He's the one who died for us. And they apply the blood. One more mystery about this, the lamb part. They apply the blood, and we have to apply the blood into every part of our life. That's what it's about. Not just saying, I apply the blood, but every part of your life. Touch it with the power of God yes. and the love of God. And how did they apply the blood on the beams? They applied the blood on the beams. They did the top, the side, and the side. Years later, God would answer it. And in Jerusalem, on another Passover... He would take the blood of a lamb and put it against beams of wood. 
just as they did in Egypt, blood of the lamb, beams of wood, Calvary, blood of the lamb, beams of wood. They did it in three places, here, here, and here. God did it in three places, here, here, and here. When they did it in Egypt, and they put, and they put the blood, it formed a triangle, here, here, and here, pointing up man to God. When God did it, it formed a triangle pointing down God to man, answering with a lamb. <laughs> oh, and if you put the two triangles together, you get the Star of David, oh. the covenant of God, man oh. and God. Thank you. <laughs> Power. <laughs> God is awesome. Awesome. God is awesome. And what does it tell you about another revelation about the cross? Passover tells you the cross is not ju just an execution stake. The cross is a doorway because that's what the beams of Passover are, the doorway to get out of whatever you have to get out of and enter whatever you have to enter in, yeah. how you get into the kingdom of heaven no matter where you are. That's why the Lord says, come. It's the doorway of the Lamb. Mm. Now, oh, we are so going beautiful. to do something very special as we come to the second part, which is really all about, all about the communion, and the Lord's Supper. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to get ready for the Lord's presence in his table. And what was done in the Passover is that after they had the first part of the meal, what happened was the Lord got up and he did something. And the second part of Passover is really about new life, and even the future that is yet to come. We'll touch on that. But it's about the new beginning, being born again. Yeah. And it's about the newness of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so what he did at this time in the Passover, there's something called the Urchatz, which is that the leader is to wash his hands, symbolically washes his hands. But Messiah did something different. He got up. It says, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he'd come forth from God and was going back to God, he rose up from supper, laid aside his garments, taking a towel, he girded himself about, then he poured water into the basin. We are about to partake into the Lord's Supper. And but the Passover is about the power of cleansing and washing and, and being made new by the power of God. So whatever we need cleansing for, and we need it continuously too, God is good and God is more than willing to wash us our feet. And he said to, he said then, he came to Simon Peter, and Simon Peter said, Lord, do you wash my feet? And Yeshua, Jesus said, what I do you don't realize now, but you shall understand later. Peter said, never, you shall not wash my feet. Yeshua answered, if I don't wash you, you have no part in me. There's almost a humility in being washed. And so we're going to do something as we get ready for the Lord's Supper. In your tables, you all have napkins, and you should have a, something of water. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to take a few moments, symbolically, but also, to, also for real. It's in groups of two or three. It could be the person next to you, the person across. It's okay. We're going to do two things. We're going to pray just to get our hearts asked whatever you want prayer for to the person near you in groups of two or three or four. But also, symbolically, first take the napkin in the water, and symbolically, we're not going to ask you to wash your feet. <laughs> but, but, but we might do something here. But wash your hands. Wash the hand of your neighbor as symbolically. Wash the hand. It's an act of humility and servanthood. And then we're going to do something here very special up on the table. But do that to each other and pray for you. Tell the person near you what you want prayer for and pray for each other. Make sure everybody has somebody. Take a few moments as we do that. And as we do that, I'll... While you do that, you'll just hear some scriptures. The Lord said during the Passover, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. In my Father's house, and trust in me, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If you love me, you'll obey what I command. I'll ask the Father, and he'll give you another counselor to be with you always, the Spirit. Shalom I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives to you. 
Do not let your heart be troubled, and do not let it be afraid. You are already clean because of the word I spoke to you. But remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit. As the Father has loved me, so I love you. Now remain, abide in my love. My command is this, love each other just as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that one lays down his life for his friends. I'm no longer calling you servants, I call you my friend. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. The greatest of you is the servant of all, the greatest of you. So love each other as I have loved you. And if you are watching this, you can join in. This is an old hymn. My Jesus, I love you. I know you are mine. For you all the follies of sin I resign My gracious Redeemer My Savior are Thou If ever I've loved you my Jesus is now. I loved you because you first loved me. I love you because you first, you first loved me and purchased my pardon on, on Calvary. Tree. I love you for wearing the thorns on your brow. If ever I've loved you, my Jesus, it is now. I've never seen it like this before until today. I'm, I'm just the revelation that the Son of God who rose from the dead, wouldn't you and me, we'd been pretty proud probably, but in fact, that we were powerful enough to have the power of God in us to come back to life. But he humbles, not only eats together with his disciples, but he washes their feet. Yeah. Yeah. That is amazing. I, I'm glad yeah. you brought this up. I've, I, I've never fitted in with communion before yeah. and with a Passover. Yeah, and, and, and I, you know, the Spirit's leading. The, Spirit, yes. the Spirit's ministering in all yeah. this. It's the beauty of the Lord. We're sensing yeah. His beauty. And that's what He is. This yeah. is the God of the universe, and yet He gets down on His knees to wash us. Even if we were just the one person, He would do it. And that's what He did. If we're saved, He, in a sense, washed our feet, mm -hmm. washes us. And we, He says, just do likewise and you'll walk in blessing. Do likewise. Beautiful. Well, now, I can't think of a better preparation. We are now, and we're nearing the, the final part, is that we're going to partake of the Lord's Supper. This is the center part. This is the third cup that we're going to partake of, which is called the cup of redemption, which is what he lifted up at that time. But before that, there's, a, there's one more piece of bread, and that is the hidden bread which was called the afikomen. And that's the one that we remember was broken and hidden away and shrouded. And Well, it's called the afikomen. It's a Greek word and almost no Jewish people really knows what it means. Some say it means the after dish because it comes after you ate. But it also can mean in Greek, he who comes. And so the ultimate thing is that nothing can continue until it's, he's back. And so we now take the wherever you, the leader, wherever you put that or hit it, take out the afikomen, which is the, the wrapping. And then, of course, we also know Messiah didn't stay wrapped up. 
He no. came out. He came out. And the second part of that is there is hope and joy and blessing. And so this is the Afikomim. He. And we now will, everybody take a piece. As we take this together, you can split it and pass it down both ways. And everybody take a piece. And this bread now represents, but we were not going to eat it yet. Um, but, we, but in a moment we will. But this represents his life. And I, you know, I'm I'm ministered as much as anybody. I am really just sensing the presence of God and the beauty of God. And just that we're just to give thanks to God. That's what he wants. Give thanks. It'll take so many other things. So many so many other things will be solved if we put him first. Like and just get back to it. And that's what it's about. That's why the Lord said Keep coming back to your salvation. Don't ever get away from it. You'll never get away. And you, if, if you stay there, you'll always be growing. You know, never lose that wow in God. Lord, you amazing grace that saved a wretch like me. And so he took this, and this is when he said, and this, and this is while they were eating Yeshua, Jesus took some bread and blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples. And this is where he said, I mean, he said, I am the bread of life. And the bread of life means... It's not just we say we believe in Jesus. He's our bread, meaning we live on him, meaning he's our joy. He's our sustenance. And, and the more we make him that, the more blessed we're going to be. And so we have to make him our joy again and our life again and our, our delight that we can't wait for every moment. And that's what it's about. And he'll bless. And so the bread of our lives, we lift it up. And let's, before we partake of this, just to, in his presence, whatever you need to, you need to tell God something do so and just giving thanks to God hallelujah we love just to give thanks yes Lord hallelujah we just praise you Lord and thank you for all the blessings Lord without you we'd be nowhere but with you you have done all things and we just praise you Lord you're awesome it's all about you you're wonderful and we just want our lives to praise you and glorify you and to walk in your sweet presence. Thank you. Passover lamb, Messiah, Thank Jesus. Jesus. And he said, this is my body. I am the bread of life who comes down from heaven and gives his life to the world. He who eats of this bread shall not hunger. I am the bread of life, the body that is given for you, broken as the Passover matzah pure and the bread of our lives. We give thanks to him who is everything, as we partake. And he said these words, Baruch atah Adonai, Rehinu melech haolam, hamotzi lechem min ha'aretz. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, who brings forth the bread of the earth. And so he says, partake, all of you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And then, mm. thank you, Lord. He took a cup, it says, he took the cup and he gave thanks to God. And the cup is now the third cup. This is the cup of redemption, the cup of the covenant. We shared how the cup of the, of the bride and groom, they share together. And as the Lord consecrated everything to us, let's take a moment to dedicate, rededicate, re-consecrate our hearts and our lives to him. God's going to bless it. Yes. But let's do that. The Lord not only loves us, he delights in our love for him. So let's just take a moment before the Lord, each of us, and all at home who are doing this, let's just lift this up to the Lord and, re, and all the more reconsecrate our lives and hearts to our first love. We praise you this day that you are so present in our midst here. And we bless you. And he said, this is the blood of the new covenant, the cup of the new covenant, which is poured out for the forgiveness of sin, the forgiveness of many. Mm. And he said, partake of it, all of you, the blood of forgiveness. And he said, <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, creates the fruit of the vine as we share the, what represents the life that is poured out for you. We partake of the third cup, communion. Thank you, Lord. And just say, let's take a moment for those who are watching. And let's just, just 
If you're watching right now, let's just, we just want to give you a chance of something. The greatest thing in the world is to know God. Yes. The greatest thing in the world is to know the Lord's love in your life. doesn't matter if you're Catholic, Protestant, Jewish, Muslim, Buddhist, atheist, the, the worst sinner in the world. God loves you, yes. and that's what this is all about. And if you were the only one on earth, he would have done it. He loves you so much, he gave his life for you. Wherever you are, you're not alone. And wherever, whatever you're in, it's not hopeless. Right. He's right there. There's a yes. door. Yes. And there's a hand. Thank and there's the Lord. And he yes. said, there, there's two roads you can go on. One leads to heaven and the other to hell. And God, his love is, and his will is not that you perish, but that you be saved. Yes. And so therefore, if you are not born again, you're on the wrong road. You're heading the wrong road. That's eternal judgment. That's hell. But God's love is that you would not perish. And that's why he said you must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven. And so no matter who you are, no matter what you are, God is calling you by name right where you are and saying, come to me now. It's time. And maybe you've known him, but you've been away from him. He says, come back now. And so the Lord is calling you. And it's as simple as coming back or saying yes to God and following him now. We praise you, Lord, for this day. And we praise you for being in the presence of your people. We thank you. And now, as we are all standing, which is part of the Passover, Passover now, as we head home, turns to the future. And Passover is not just about the past, the present, but about what is yet to come. God has saved us, is saving us, and will save us. Passover actually looks forward to the kingdom of Messiah. Hallelujah. And, the time, and even the book of Revelation. Because Passover even gives the, the, the mystery of that, that you have a world under bondage in Revelation. You have a tyrant ruling, as in Passover. God sends judgments and plagues on that on, in the book of Revelation. The people of God overcome by the blood of the Lamb in Revelation. The Redeemer is sent to save them in Revelation, to end the power of the old and bring them home and bring the new out of the old. <laughs> Passover is there. And Moses was, of course, a shadow of Messiah. Even the rabbis saw that. And one of the signs of that is this cup, this mystery cup of Elijah. And the reason why it's here is because in the book of Malachi, the end of the Hebrew Scriptures, it says that I will, that day will come, Messiah is coming, I will first send Elijah to prepare the way. Yes. Now, John the Baptist was a type of Elijah, but we know also Elijah's coming. Yes. And so we can say these are the days of Elijah. Yes. And so... What is symbolic to, as we herald the coming of Messiah, is one person has to go to the door and open up the door symbolically as for Elijah, but symbolically really for Messiah, saying, we're looking forward to you coming. So which door do we want to open? And we, to, we can open it out there. We can open it here. Who would like to do that? Let my children open this door. The children are supposed That's to learn, next generation. it says. Open the door. Open both of them. I don't know if we can get them all on hook, but get them all on hook. The harmony yeah. of the Word yeah. of God, yes. impossible yeah. with man. They ran the, it through the computers, all the prophecies and all. It was like billions, trillions to one possibility. I mean, just so beyond anything, carillions or whatever is a word that we don't know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is our Messiah. Yes, yes. Who could have put this together? I mean, who could have put God. this together? Only the hand of God. He's so perfect. That's why he chose this day. He made this day to show this whole thing. Our faith is a Passover uh, uh, faith. When I was, after I came to the Lord and I was sitting around with my family in Passover, I'm going like, inside I'm saying, can't you see? Don't you see this? It's so obvious. Don't you see it? You know, but it's not always obvious if, if, unless the, the veil is lifted. And I remember once I was at the Passover table, I have a little pocket New Testament. And just to read, and I, I said, Lord, I, I, I'm like, they should see this. I just opened up the Bible. It opens up right to Messiah, our Passover lamb, in the middle of this whole thing. Oh. And, I, and I'll tell you one other thing. Once I was doing a presentation at church years ago, um, and I did the Passover, and I said, at this point, go to the door, open up just symbolically. It's for Messiah, symbolically of his coming, but you open up for Elijah. And they open the door, and there's a woman standing there with a baby, and the baby's name was Elijah, oh. right at the door. <laughs> Is that true? And they had no idea. They've never done this. And, and um, 
But the Lord is real. We yes. know that. I mean, the Lord is real. The Lord is good. The Lord is real good. And that's what this is about. This is our faith. He is awesome and real. And it's past, present, and future. Yes. Because what this is also is that what the last part of Passover is, that we are a people of hope. If yes. God saved us, He will save us. If God got us through, He's going to get us through. Yes. He's not going to give up. We are a people of life. Thanks. And so when they come out, the last part is at the end of Passover, they're coming out of Egypt. They're a new people. They're rising from, they're leaving death to life. And that's what we're doing. They're leaving darkness to light and sorrow to joy. And that is our journey now. We're on a journey on a caravan led by our shepherd, Messiah, Jesus, from glory to glory. Ultimately, we're going home just yes. like they were. Yes. And so Passover is about life. And right during Passover comes the new harvest and that comes the resurrection. All this is part of it. And so we're ultimately about, a, we're on a journey home to the promised land. So the last part of Passover is, link, is all about the fact that God has a hope for us and we're heading to the promised land. Yes. And the, the very, you know, the last cup is called the cup of praise because praise. we want to, people of God have to be a people who praise God. Yes. And, and, and he said at the end, he said, remember when the Lord said this, he said, I tell you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine again until when I drink it newly with you in my Father's kingdom. That's the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's we're going to be celebrating this in heaven. Wow. So that, that it keeps it, going on. It keeps going on. The party does not end in God. It's kind of like you in the, in the at the end of the Bible you have this marriage, and then you have the celebration. The celebration there's no ending on that celebration. So that's what we're doing. We will drink again with Him yes. the cup of praise. praise. And so the Passover Lord. praise, as we do this, is this. It says this, and this is done actually from the traditional Passover, and it's totally the life of every believer. It says, therefore, we lift it up, we are bound to thank, praise, laud, glorify, extol, honor, bless, exalt, and reverence Him who performed great things for our ancestors and all these miracles. He brought us out of slavery into freedom. He brought us out of sorrow into joy. He brought us from mourning to festivity and from darkness to great light. Mm. He brought us from bondage to redemption. Yes. Therefore, let us sing a new song in His presence. Praise. Hallelujah. And then the cup is lifted up, the fourth cup of the future. And then we're about to partake in what is always said. They always say next year in Jerusalem. Because for 2,000 years, the Jewish people said, one day we're going to be back in Jerusalem. That's God's will. Well, they've been saying it, and now God did it. God is real, and He has them back in Jerusalem. So, wow. but, but for spiritually, we can also say, next year or in the future, we're going to celebrate this in the new Jerusalem, yes. in the Lord, with the Lord. So the, Hallelujah. so the way you say, the way you say, <laughs> next year in Jerusalem, in the language of Jesus, we'll, I'll guide you through it. It's very simple. Lashana, Lashana, Habaa, Habaa, Virushalayim. <laughs> Next year Next in Jerusalem. Year in and Jerusalem. now we partake of the final cup. You can drink it all up. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> mm. uh, Praise and God. joy Hallelujah. is the end of uh, the, the close of Passover. Hallelujah. The Lord is our Savior. And I want to show you something that at the very end of the Passover, in the Last Supper, it says they, they sang a hymn. Mm -hmm. Now we know what the hymns they sang, because there's a certain hymn that was appointed in the Passover. And so they sang this hymn. Listen to, listen to the words. It's Psalm 118. And it says, they say this. Here's from this. It says, this, this is what they sang. The stone which the builders have rejected has become the cornerstone. Mm -hmm. They did this on Passover. Mm -hmm. it said, and they sang, Hosanna, wow. save us. And they sang, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are my God, I will give you thanks. So all this is all about the Lord. It was always sung every Passover. They sang the hymn, and this is one other thing that was done, and I want to do this together with all, all you people at home. You can do it too. I'm going to read from the very last psalm. These are the songs of praise. And when you hear the word hallelujah, that's simply Hebrew for praise God. And so when you hear, when I, when I say praise God, or when I say praise Him, this is from the Psalms, okay. you want to shout out hallelujah. All right. And that's total Hebrew, We're okay? Ready. But you got to shout it out. Yes. What I say, let's try it. Hallelujah. 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 All right, ready? Ready. Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Praise God in His temple. Hallelujah. Praise Him in His mighty expanse. Hallelujah. Praise Him in His strength. Hallelujah. Praise Him for His greatness. Hallelujah. Praise Him with trumpet blast. Hallelujah. Praise Him with harp and lyre. Hallelujah. Praise Him with tambourines. Hallelujah. Praise Him with dancing. Hallelujah. Praise Him with stringed instruments. Hallelujah. Praise Him with flutes. Hallelujah. Praise Him with loud cymbals. Hallelujah. Praise Him with crashing cymbals. Hallelujah. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you and thank you for this time. Bless all your people. Let yes. us go forth from here Bless. with blessing, with new life, with new joy, with new love, with new power, with yes. new anointing, yes. with Jesus. new new peace. Lord, with new uh, infillings of your thank presence, Lord. We just praise you praise and thank you for you. You are good. And we praise you in the holy name of Yeshua Jesus, the Lamb of God. Amen. Amen.